Hi everyone, welcome to Your Right to Know with Tony DeFazio of DeFazio and Zayden. And today we're talking about a case that is in the news, all over the news, and it's the Bill Cosby case. Bill Cosby was charged, but what was he charged with? And I guess that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. And this is a five-part series because there's so much to this case. Uh, Tony feels we need a lot of time to kind of get into the different aspects of it. So you tune in each week and you'll get a little bit more. But today, let's just talk about what are the charges? What is he charged with? Well, he got charged in Pennsylvania under a statute uh, alleged ind indecent assault. That's the, the basic charge. And it stems out of an incident that took place in 2004 where he allegedly drugged and had sex with a woman that he knew um, from Temple University. And the way they brought the case uh, so far is they simply brought uh, an affidavit um, by the prosecutor and then a criminal complaint and a warrant was issued for the arrest. So he has not been indicted yet. He has not gone through the grand jury process, which I know we talked about before. Um, this is just an initial complaint, which brings him into court and gets him charged with the case. But from what I understand, this is a, something that happened like I don't know, 11 years ago, 12 years ago? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it happened in 2004, so it's, it's 12 years ago. In New York, they could not have brought this case, but in uh, Pennsylvania, they have a 12-year statute of limitations on uh, any rape or, uh, in the, or assault, sexual assault type of cases. And so because the statute of limitations is so long, they can still bring the case. They literally came in under the wire uh, by January or February of next of this year, um, they would have been uh, out after the 12 years. But uh, they were able to bring it in. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's been issues back and forth about why do you wait 12 years to have a statute of limitations? Why is there, well, first of all, why is there statute of limitations at all? And second, why is it it's so long? And, you know, the reason for statute of limitations, whether it's civil cases or criminal cases, is that they, there needs to be kind of an end point for investigations. Um, you know, once a case gets three, four, five years old, it's very difficult in any circumstance to actually bring the case, uh, to actually prosecute someone for that case. Because five years after the fact, you're not going to find as many witnesses, you're not going to find forensic evidence, you're not going to find any of the other information that you need to really bring this type of a case. So they, they kind of put an end point on it for, um, for investigative purposes. Um, but there has been pressure to extend the statute of limitations for rape cases because there is sometimes a, a wait, a waiting period, where there is a, a, what they call a delayed outcry. Uh, In other words, that the, the victim doesn't come forward for sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years. And so they don't want to be in a position where just because they waited, um, you know, more than three or four years, that uh, they can't prosecute someone who is con who had committed a very se what is a very serious crime. Um, but there's another reason why they have statute of limitations, and that's to protect um, innocent defendants. Um, because if you have a situation where they can be accused of 20 years from now, um, somebody accused you 20 years ago on a particular day you raped me or you assaulted me, it becomes difficult for a person who is innocent to defend themselves because mm -hmm. how are they going to be able to establish where they were on a particular day? It's hard to pr produce an alibi. I mean, nobody keeps calendars, entries, for, you know, you keep tax records seven years. You don't keep calendar entries going 20 years. So unless you um, have had a very detailed life where you, you can document it, you're in a hard position to defend yourself. So to protect the innocent uh, under those circumstances, they also have these statute of limitations. Um, but in, in uh, Pennsylvania, they, made, uh, they picked this figure of 12 years, and they decided that that's what they, what they want to do, and, and that's, that's why it is that way. Now you mentioned that if this was in New York, it wouldn't have held. Um, because it would have passed whatever the limitation is. it statute of limitation based on each individual state? Yeah, each state and the federal government, they have their own statute of limitations. They make their own determination. Um, but in this case, it's, it's also kind of interesting because this isn't something where they really needed to wait 12 years because they had all the facts that are in front of them now um, back uh, a year after the incident in 2005 when the district attorney's office and the police investigated this crime uh, investigated this and made a determination the prosecutor that they did not want to prosecute the case that they didn't believe at that point they had enough evidence um, to go forward with the case so statute of limitations really doesn't come into play uh, in, in this case that there was a delay in the anything that the victim did it really had to do with the investigation and the determination as to who made the decision to finally prosecute it which um, there may be some political reasons behind it and i know we're going to talk about that in one of our upcoming episodes yeah all right so we're setting the table with this uh national uh 
lawsuit that is in, in the news all over the place, and you, you get a sense of exactly what's going on. Tony's got his own views on it, and does the case hold water? He's got some very interesting thoughts on that, and that will be in our next episode of Your Right to Know.